Right, hello everybody, welcome to my first round match against Azagal. Uh, obviously starting with a perfect defence there is a nice little start. Um, I qualified through Rebel. Um, I finished third in Rebel. I also won DBBC, but chose to chose to go with the Rebel ticket that I got. I've got a 70% win rate with uh, Woodies, uh, well overall and with Woodies. And Azagal. Um, he qualified through Liga Hispana Blood Bowl 2. He's got a 64% win rate with Dwarves, and that's all he plays. He's played over 250 games with 260 games with Dwarves in Champs Ladder. Um, so I don't know what he plays in leagues, but I imagine he plays Dwarves in leagues as well. I qualified with Woodies in both leagues, so I thought I had to go with him just because of the best team. Um, and because I'd already qualified them, there you go, you got a Kaz turn one. I was a little bit, you know, upset about that. I like putting the tree over this way because it stopped him just uh, hitting him with the Dauntless. But maybe I should have kept him in the middle so that he could, uh, it would be a frenzy trap, I've just just realised. We'll be chase cam, so we'll be looking at it from the Dwarf point of view. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I didn't really like my pick of block on the catcher, wherever it is there. I think Wrestle on a Lino would have been a lot better. But I was kind of gambling a bit to get him guard after game one, which is silly because I might have wanted Mighty Blow on the, on the Tackle Dancer. So I think if I could go back, I would definitely have had Wrestle on a Lino instead. Um, he's gone three guard and block for his runner, which is a, which is a fine, fine uh, chance. Uh, so the reason I kicked first um, is the bash team in this case dwarves their only option is to stall out the drive for eight turns and score on turn eight wood elves have a lot of options and a lot of you know flexibility to score earlier if they want so i wanted to know what i had to do on offense so i could know which tactic to pursue on on offense um and there you go i rolled it both down i chose the skull because he's got block just to be funny i chose the skull there um, yeah, I, I won the toss and chose to kick, and yeah, that, that that's it. I, you know, depending on how the half goes, you know as Woodells whether you have to stall the drive, or whether you have to score early, or whether it doesn't matter where you score, and then that changes how the Dwarves defend as well. If this was the first half, the Dwarves could completely ignore the ball, and just try to hurt my team, and then hope that they score on their drive, you know, whereas once they know whether what the what the crack is, they, they you know, I just I don't know, I just think I just think it gives knowing what the score is gives the elves the advantage in terms of like tactics just because they got just they're so much more flexible than the dwarves. He's gone for like the eye cage here, although it's uh it's more of a minor symbol cage, it's still an eye cage, isn't it? A guard on either side. Which is actually quite good because um because he does take uh it does take guard out of the out of the fight for me, so I'm quite I'm quite happy with him with him doing this cage. Although he's only a cage of three, which lets him get more guys in the fight, it is taking guard out of the fight. A nice little push there to get the tree somewhat relevant again. And I'm I'm just blocking him here, just you know he's he's giving me blocks. I don't, <laughs> I you know he's got tackles. I don't really want to dodge away and make a line here. Plus he's got frenzy. So while I could have got like you know some kind of defense there I just thought if he wants to go forward then I can then I can squeeze him on I don't mind if he pushes forward too much because then I can squeeze him against the sideline anyway so I just thought I'll just take all these blocks that I've got and minimize the blocks I'm taking he doesn't have mighty blow so he's not that it's not that favorable for him to outbash me really like obviously he's armor 9 and I'm R7 but if he's just making contact they might and I'm knocking him down every turn um, he's gonna come off worse isn't he so I was just trying to get the bashes in there. Another good point from Adonna Kelly is, yeah, another reason to kick is you getting to defend with a full 11 players is really good for elves, and they can still score an offense if they've got seven players left. So, um, yeah, it's, it is good. I, I do like kicking in a, in a competitive, in, in like a competitive res environment like this. I would vastly prefer kicking when the result is the only thing that matters and you can sacrifice all of your players. That's the thing as well, you see, if if the uh if it's if I'm receiving in the first half, I want to keep all my players alive for the second half. Whereas 
if if I'm receiving in the second half and and a touchdown is a win, I can sacrifice anybody to get the to get the score, can't I? So now it is yeah now it now it is a real eye cage. And you know I could I could always go for the uphill here. He does have sure hands, so the strip's not relevant. And you know it's so it's like a twenty four percent chance with a reroll rooted there. That was a little bit unfortunate because I was going to move him up and then get back and make quite quite a strong defensive position really. So I had to change tack and uh, just punch things. <laughs> Yeah, just maximizing blocks, get, do the blitz there to run around and assist there. He is armor eight this one, so casting him wasn't wasn't as outrageous as casting a normal a normal dwarf. I don't know why I hit this dwarf rather than the troll slayer. I guess because the troll slayer's on a on the dancer and he hasn't got tackle. And then roll the one on the dodge. Oof. So you know that, that was like I don't know how many blocks I made there, three or three or four blocks. And he's only getting two blocks back, so just realized that normally I have chat off for the replays and I've got chat on now but never mind okay so I, I was explaining to YouTube that I was responding to Adonta Kellis because normally when I do replays I have the chat turned off uh, but the chat's on now okay so yeah how did I feeling yeah yeah it's to stop spoilers isn't it yeah so I tell you what I will turn off the chat um, yeah I turn off the chat to avoid spoilers uh, for the YouTube videos um, he did make he did make quite a few dodges in this game, but you know that, that's okay, isn't it? At the end of the day, um, so now you know. I think this turn I may oh yeah I can do a nice chain here to free up two players, uh, so they don't have to dodge. I liked I like that blitz there to get the chain, because you know, even rolling two pluses, you fail about one in six, right? If that's the first dodge you make in the turn. It's pretty bad. If it's the sec if it's the sixth, it's not. It's all right. I, I think here I should have definitely followed up, so I could have three diced with the tree. Um, but once I hadn't followed up, I was like, shit, because I don't want to block him now. Because if I push him, he would actually he would have been in contact with him, so it wouldn't have been that bad. But I was thinking if I push him, he'll be he'll be free to move, and I didn't want to leave him free to move. Um, so I got back a little bit in front, and this is the thing, you know. Even there's a screen here as well, so these three are screened off. And he's stuck on the tree. So there's only one guy who can blitz to try and get his team back together. So I'm not doing too badly here. Although the first turn Kaz was, was horrible. Um, I've Kaz been back. And they're okay, taking a KO there. But just a KO, isn't it? You, you, you know, the good thing about Wood Elves is as well. You expect to take a few Kaz. And you expect to take a few KOs. And you can still win when you get them. Whereas if this was... Uh, say an orc team and I'd taken a Kaz and a KO mentally it would be harder to deal with because you'd be thinking well I'm a bit screwed now aren't I whereas with Wood Elves you're like oh good I've only taken two guys I've only had two guys removed <laughs> um, so yes yeah, so you made the dodge away and I'm like oh you know what I should have just followed and three diced him but never mind so so now, you know, I get the chance to blitz a guard, get a lucky armor break. Um, but, you know, tagging, tagging the ball here with a dodger isn't, isn't too bad, I think. Um, just because he's only got one, one tackle guy nearby. And then, so I was going to put him there to stop him blitzing that side. And then I was going to dodge somebody out. Oh, yeah, I was going to dodge him out. But I rolled a one. Uh, yep, yeah, and then block him. And then if I push him to here, if I power him to here, he can run through without making a dodge. And then but then it would have been really hard for him, but I won in nine the block after one in sixing the dodge. So if I hadn't done that, I could have gone three, four, five, six, seven. And then it would have been really hard for him to deal with it, actually, I think. So I was a bit disappointed with that one in nine, yeah, but never mind.
now he gets to now he gets to pretty much deal with it. Unfortunately, he just blocks with he just blocks with the uh, runner. It was a uh, an interesting play, as because now it makes it pretty hard for him to protect the ball, doesn't it? Especially with that stun. If I hadn't been a stun, he'd, I think if this guy hadn't been stunned, I'd like the block a lot more with the ball carrier. But that was pretty risky. Yeah, the eye, the eye cage. Ducky's saying it was really greedy, but um, yeah, I mean, I was, it was. It's low odds to get it. I mean, it was bad that it gave me the low odds every turn if I wanted it. it was a bit bad, but. I was happy that he just took two guards out of the fight, to tell you the truth. So this was a bit risky here to get two dice in the ball. I had one dice and then uh, make a dodge with dodge. But then I had two dice in the ball. So, I mean, that was a pretty good ball hit, wasn't it? Obviously, I wasn't going to move any of these to see what happened. Roll the gym powers, re-roll, get more gym powers. And, yeah, I wasn't, wasn't very happy about that. <laughs> This guy came back to defend, you know, I could have had him as a scoring threat, I guess. Um, because now this guy went as the scoring threat, because he he then had, you know, that was Max move to score a touchdown. And he couldn't really, didn't really have the movement to get around um, to add more to the defence, I thought. So yeah, pretty, pretty bad that I'm getting both dancers tackled this turn. <laughs> Uh, because he, he's a bit greedy here. This is this is this is the greediest thing that he does is uh, is using the blitz to hit the hit the dancer there, rather than just using the blitz to hit the catcher. Um, because he can't. Well, he could block. He could block with a ball carrier now. He could just block that catcher and foul the dancer. But instead, he just goes for the he goes for the dodge. He goes for the one in nine chance to straight up lose the match, which. That never feels good, but at the end of the day, you only lose it one in nine times. I think in, in like kind of important games against good coaches, you've kind of got to take those risks, you know. And it doesn't feel good, but you've got to do it a lot of the time. So here I just went for the, the two dice uphill. Um, it wasn't, I didn't re-roll it because it wasn't great odds of a good recovery. It would have needed a, some kind of bounce into here and then a leap pass handoff. It would have been possible though, but I wasn't going to use the, my last reroll on the hit. Uh, I was going to save my last reroll for the one turn attempt. Uh, just again trying to make a few hits. And, Yeah, very good point by Donna Kellis. He would have made the hit because he wasn't, you, you couldn't prevent the uphill. You like, although he was based by a strip ball dancer, the dancer he has got two hands and he had guard next to him, so he couldn't have, he couldn't have, I couldn't have got a one dice on him. So why not? Yeah, why not? Why not just block? Yeah, fair, fair point. So he didn't, he didn't really gain a lot from that dodge. Um, but still, I'm not going to criticize people for making dodges like that just because you're going to have to. Do riskier things in bigger games, aren't you? So there you go. Anyway, he gets the eight turn stall. Um, luckily, got the KOs back because you know it's it's very easy to have somebody KO'd for the whole game, isn't it? So yeah, I'm I'm pretty happy here. Really, ten ten players versus eleven. Um, it started off horribly with the, the tree being crap. You know, both downing, rooting, and uh, the Kaz on turn one. It started really horrific, but. Uh, you know, it certainly changed with that cars and, and not taking any further damage this half. Yeah, in this case may <laughs> in this case maybe the dodge that he did wasn't wasn't so good, but you know, it's it's a big game, isn't it? There's pressure I I he does have a reserve with his build. Um he didn't go with the apple, he went with the reserve. And uh, he went ahead two troll slayers. If you don't have two troll slayers, you can have a an apple and a reserve. Um, so he has still got the full 11, I'm down to 10. 
Uh, but you know, I've got there's a, there's a decent chance of the one turn here. Um, this guy gives the assist. He blitzes in, gets one push, then he pushes and gets a second push uh, to here, and then I could leap and get a third push, or I could just have the second push to there and be like four, four, three, two, uh, with two of the dodges being two tackles. So, and obviously on a quick snap, I can go there and stuff. So that there were options of the one turn, but then the glorious riot. The glorious riot gave me two turns to score, and obviously Wood Elves with two turns, um, pretty, pretty good. Especially like this is this is one of the better one turn attempt stopping formations. But um, when you get a, when you get a two turn chance as Woodies, this was a bit horrible having to make this. Uh, I had to either make a GFI with a catcher or a GFI with him to hit to get to not have to make a GFI last turn. I don't know. Maybe I should have got into scoring range first. And um, just so this, you could argue, you could definitely argue this is a mistake. I could have been one square further back, and then done that move first. You know, but I figured if I if I fail, I'm not going to score anyway. So I might as well just do the hit first and see what happens. So this is a, this is a huge turn for rolling for not rolling a one here. Obviously, I've got the re. I'm I'm going to use the re-roll here to try and keep the ball safe. This was an inspired tree activation, eating the one, just randomly. It's as if I've got a RNG dice seed there, isn't it, when I just <laughs> activate the But no, it, it was because I thought, this guy's out of the way now, now I can activate the tree in there to tie up two players, and then I'll do the dodges so that, you know, it's less of a fail, less bad failure state. Um, but it did work out well when I rolled my ones. And yeah, so I, I rolled loads of two pluses there. But I would have used my reroll because... I figure he can't do too much to stop me against this against this cage. Uh, but he, he actually surprised me. He did, he did very well um, this turn. Well, I say that. <laughs> um, he, 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 had a, he, did, he did have a good effort to stop us. He got more guys relevant than I thought he would. But... Um, it's still at the end of the day. It's not. It's not that hard to stop. Well, to break through. He sees me roll all those two pluses, and then he rolls a one. But I mean, he made the dodges. Yeah, and this guard guy, waddling forward. Um, well, I would have liked to have tied them up with the tree. Like to be fair, the tree getting in there was would have probably been better than one of those not filling filling the dodges because I would have re-rolled them filling the dodges and I wasn't going to re-roll the tree. So yeah, easy clear here because um, I had this guy free to cancel the assist. He stands up to cancel that assist. He blocks to free the other dancer. He moves in for the assist, and then it's a two dice. A both down would have meant I would have had to dodge away from non dodge from non tackle, but a power means I can follow, or a push means I can follow. But it's still a one in thirty six to not score. But thank God, did not roll, did not roll a a, a double one. Oh, thanks very much. How now, fun cow? <laughs> um, I'm glad. I'm glad you found them. It's fun. So obviously that not see now now that I know it's one one, it, it just changes the half, doesn't it? Because it gives that gives the Wood Elves power. If you're one nil down, you know you you know that there's potential overtime if you score. A bet, best case there's overtime, one nil down, or I could score early and then turn him over. So I, you know I, I I can just I can plan my offensive drive based on the scoreline, can't I? And now it's 1-1. I know that if I score on turn 8, it's overtime. Uh, it's overtime. I've won. So I know that a stall out is good. But also, if I score before turn 8, you know, it's still really hard for him to win, isn't it? So, uh, and the best, to get, the best case for him is if, if I score at any time, the best he can do is overtime. So... I think it is really powerful for elves to know what they have to do on their own offensive drive because you know there'd be times where you'd be making a, a different risk or something and like you know I can sac I know I can sacrifice any players to score 
you know, I don't care if 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 uh, if I end the match with two players on the pitch now, as long as I've as long as I've scored on my drive, I've won, haven't I? Whereas if this was the first half, I'd still have to be protecting my players, making sure my war dancers didn't get hit. Um, here, I can just sacrifice a war dancer to tie up a tackle guy, and it's no problem if he gets if he gets cast because I'll have won. <laughs> so I really do like kicking for that reason. Um, obviously, punch these guys into the tree. It's kind of an all right thing to do, isn't it? Quite a few armor rates, but um, in, there's an interesting stat after the game. Just for two interesting stats after the game. Yeah, yeah, and the thing is, they don't have any. They don't have any flexibility. Like if 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 if. They're just trying to score on turn eight, whatever happens. And it's hard for them to defend because now they think, well, if he scores, yeah, because because he, he's so slow, he's thinking, well, if he scores at any point, I've probably lost. So he's got uh, he's got to not just protect the long score, he's got to protect the quick score as well, hasn't he? So it, it, it not only does it make, not knowing, knowing what you have to do, not only makes it easier for, for the Ls, it also makes it harder for the Bash team. <laughs> because... It's it's kind of like overtime almost, you know. Overtime for a bash team against a wood elf team is horrible because you you know you've got to protect them stalling out, but you've also got to protect them sc st scoring at any time, which is really hard. So he's keeping a safety. I, I did I did expose the leader there, which was a bit risky, but I would rather expose the leader than the uh, war dancer. But yeah, it was it was a. I should have bad it was bad play really because these could have been swapped the leader and the uh, non leader but got away with it got away with giving a hit on the leader there for no no reason dodges away from the tree on a four plus the the, the dodges didn't bother me he made he made a few dodges but they didn't really bother me I, you can't expect dodges to uh, well the way I look at it is hello RNG God the the way I look at it is I uh I expect my, you know, kind of four pluses to fail, and my opponent's four pluses to work, basically. And, and I think that's maybe even three pluses. I think that's a, a kind of a good way to look at it. If you expect your three plus to fail, but his three plus to work, then although it's not obviously, you should expect them to work sixty-six percent of the time in all cases. But um, I think if you give your opponent a three plus shot. Actually, it works nine times out of ten, doesn't it? And if you've got a roll of three plus, thirty-three percent of the time, it, you've got to use a reroll on it. So I think it's good to be quite cautious about giving your opponents dice that they can roll. I'm rambling now, aren't I? I don't know where that came from, but I didn't activate the tree there because I just thought two uh, two dice. It wasn't worth a two dice block when he was in a good spot. Um, you know, he's tying up two players. There's no need to activate him there. Maybe the activation the first. I realised that he had this blitz. I should have. I should have probably had this guy here because he could have blitzed any one of these, and then it would have been a frenzy trap with me. So I, I probably should have put this guy behind the, these three, so that um, anything would be all right. So he's because because he's got to protect against the fast score as well now, which he wouldn't have done if his drive was unknown. Um, if his drive was unknown, he would have he would have thought the quick score wasn't so bad. Um, but yeah, so I just ran back a little bit because he's got everyone based up. I don't you know obviously if I roll a one, I'm feeling pretty bad. I do get the three dice though thanks to that that dodge that he made wasn't so good because it gave me a three dice block. Yeah, this is lagging. I don't know the stream's lagging. I don't know why. Um, so there you go. D dodge there. Ka Lucky Kaz there. Pretty good. Uh, it was the armor eight though, and I, I did target him, didn't I? I targeted him. I targeted him because he was armor eight. So, you know, I, this was a dodge with dodge, which is quite quite reliable, isn't it? Um, two dice block. 
And yeah, a couple of two pluses without without dodge. So you know, you, you could definitely say I was looking to make all those dodges. Um, but that's the thing, isn't it? The tackle's only good against the guys that have dodge, so I was able to get some dodges with dodge. And not all the dodges are scary, really, at the end of the day. But this is the thing, I'm happy I'm happy to score at any time with this driver. I said in the reason the reason I'm doing the replay of my own game is I you know I was playing it in silence, trying my hardest to concentrate. BZL eleven very kindly did the uh, did the commentary, the live commentary, but I thought for the YouTubes I thought it'd be better to uh, to like, you know, explain my thought process fully. Um, seeing as I didn't get to do it in the game, but BZL was great. So you could watch the VOD on, on Twitch, I guess, if you want. Uh, but, you know, there you go. But thanks very much to BZL. Because the first, the first few turns were very, very boring as, <laughs> as nothing was being said. Um, so yeah, this is a bit, tri a bit tricky. I was thinking about going up this way. Uh, if I'd got a POW, I would have gone up this way, I believe. But because I don't get the pal, um, I just think I want to consolidate, consolidate in here. So, blitz him. I was thinking of blitzing him with a catcher just because I would have had a, a block hit, and now you know I had to leave a guy here anyway. So, so blitzing with a catcher, I would have rather blitz with the catcher than blitz with the dancer there, because like obviously the quad skull is a lot is a lot less bad on the catcher. Um, but it was just the fact that I moved him there to, for the, the chance to go through forward a bit. Uh, but I didn't go forward. I just stayed back. And like, you know, he's stopping me going forward anyway with these two guys. You know, I couldn't have really got that much far forward if I'd got, if I'd got the pal. Uh, but I, I would have considered dodging him and blitzing him and then, you know, having a kind of cage up there is kind of what I intended. Um... <laughs> No, I didn't help. I was just offering viewers options. <laughs> right. Um. So yeah, that 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 cas was actually huge, wasn't it? Because that put him down to ten on the pitch, um, and I did have a man advantage briefly. But then, ten all is is great. Ten each, ten aside is great for the Wood Elves. They would rather have less players aside. Like you know, if they could have five aside, then the dwarves are absolutely screwed, aren't they? So. 10 versus 10 is better than 11 versus 11 for the woodies. There's a bit of a bit of a swing back to the other side open here, just because he's got most of his players, particularly the guard players, are on the wrong side. Uh, well, on the wrong side. On 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 my left side, he's got two guard. So I think going this way is better than going the other way. And my tree's on this side as well, isn't it? So the tree that gets the tree relevant. Not just being a strong man, he actually gets involved with the ball a little bit. And another another scary dodge. I mean, it what it wasn't that scary because it was still hard for him to get around. It's like I, I made quite a lot of dodges, to be fair, but also none of them were that critical, really. None of them were that really. None of them were really that critical. Obviously, the the dodge to score, and the dodges on the scoring turn, you know, and obviously rolling the riot. Rolling the riot was incredibly lucky, and that that just that turn in general, um, turn turn fifteen. But all of the other dodges weren't weren't so critical, really. But obviously, good. I mean, I didn't. I don't think I rolled the one in thirty six in this game. Don't, don't quote me on that, but I, <laughs> it's not really a spoiler. But uh, I don't, I don't think I rolled a one in thirty-six. I did roll a one in nine block at a crucial time, and he's just left me a, a route through here without dodging. Everyone else is tied up though. The dodge players have tackle on them, so and there you go. This is this was a critical one. First dodge of the turn. It doesn't get more critical than that. So re-roll's gone. Um, and you know now this this next dodge if I fail it I'm done so I stand these guys up to get put oh no that was a dodge with dodge okay um, 
and yeah, that was really critical because it was against dodge. If I fail that, he's got two dice in the ball with tackle. So that was that was a huge dodge. That was the critical dodge. This wasn't so critical. If I'd failed it, one, two, three, four, it would have been a double GFI to get two dice in the ball, but it was still quite critical. So though one was completely critical and it was quite critical, but um, luckily made them. Uh, what's it called? Tree Man Blitz there to get the guard. Um, maybe I could have tied that other one up and then made the made the second one of the turn there, but it was the last one, so it was all right. And I'd used my leader reroll, so it wasn't a loss losing the leader. But yeah, it, seeing this is the thing, I would have never just stood this guy up if it had been the first half. But because it's the second half and I know if I score, I win, I, you know, I think it's worth the, the one, the free block that I'm giving up there is worth it, just because why not? <laughs> And then I, I roll a bunch of ones, that, I roll a bunch of two pluses and he fails the first two plus that he makes. Absolutely typical. I'd feel bad if I was him. Uh, so yeah, I, I did tie up this guy, but maybe I should have tied up that guy because he's got tackle, but never mind. I did like it because it not only tied up him, it also tied up him, didn't it? Because now he'd have to make a, a four plus dodge, five plus dodge to get in there. So he kind of, putting the tree on him kind of stopped both of them. And same with this guy. This guy, wouldn't, I wouldn't have moved him in there as well to get punched. But because I know if I score, I win. I don't care it, how much attrition I take this drive. And there's there's his second one. Thick skull keeps him on the pitch. Um, and now this is just this is just really easy, isn't it? Just stand him up and blitz with a dancer. And get the pow. Into a cas, <laughs> glorious, and uh, and then he's away, and now all I have to do is is block the the block the runner, and you can't get me. So fail the first two plus there, and he's got to make, to be fair, he had to make a few two pluses here to get there, and fail the last one. So that that's fine. And to be fair, it also fails there, so it's still hard for the dwarf to even base me. But it's not over. It's not over yet. He can base. He can. He can base with a dwarf. He makes a. He makes a slight misplay here. This this guy could have based the catcher. Um, I just by going diagonally. Because as it happens, um, this catch has a free route to the runner. If he is able to base me, which he is. But yeah, this this catcher is then free of tackle. He should have he should have even based me with uh, with him, but he doesn't base with him either. He concentrates on this one, but leaves this catcher unmarked. Yeah, I like that he had a scoring threat there, just in case, in case something crazy happened. But it didn't. And it was a two-one, a two-one grind. Thanks to the riot. I mean, I may have scored the one turner anyway. There was there was a chance of scoring the one turner, uh, but obviously the riot made it. The riot, you know, he he did, he did the perfect thing. He, he grinded out his half one nil, and. Uh, Horrible for him, really. Basically, basically lost the game because of Riot. Um, but, which is a horrible way to go out of the World Cup, isn't it? One game and uh, one game and that. But you know, if if it if it if it, we would have both played the half differently if he was one nil up. But the way that the fact that I'd actually out attritioned him heavily, a guard guy, and, and a slayer and a runner, I think I would have fancied my chances in overtime. But um, but yeah, we would have both played differently and everything. So you can't really say what would have happened if there wasn't a riot and I hadn't scored the one turn. So he's just set up for a riot here. There's no, really no chance of a one turn with uh, dwarves. There is a chance, but only if you have the LOS tight. And uh, I didn't do that. So there's really no chance for one turn, especially down players. You need 11 players. 
and a tight LOS to one turn as dwarves. So he really had no chance of a one turn. He didn't get his riot. And there you go, Blood Bowl's coming home. Blood Bowl's coming home. Yeah, he, he did He did get lucky he didn't get sacked. I had like an 80% sack or something. And while I didn't have a great recovery, um, it would have made things a lot harder for him, wouldn't it? And then I had a, like a, a low odds chance of a sack as well. A 1 in 9 chance to sack him. And a 4 out of 5 chance to sack him and both failed. But, you know, it's... Uh, I don't like to... Uh, you know, I'd, I'd rather be... Like, that's why I pretty didn't win. I'd rather be, uh, you know, what's it called? <laughs> but, um, oh man, it feels a pickle. So there you go. He doesn't even get to... I don't know why he was doing that, because there's no I, there's no star player points or anything. There was no reason to, to play out the last turn. So, yeah, he, he, he only got twice as many armor breaks as me, and I got three three cards from those seven AV breaks. But the biggest thing about the, uh, about the dice rolls is... Oh no, the stats, first of all, I made 41 blocks and he made 39. So Wood Elves out blocking dwarves is pretty crazy, isn't it? But that was it, he was just he was just basing me and getting punched. So um so you know I was I was playing very conservatively and just trying to trying to outbash him. Um I made 83% dodges, which is which is absolutely bang average, isn't it? But it was kind of looking when the when the ones came, there weren't double ones and I didn't fail any crucial any crucial dodges. Um, he didn't fail any crucial dodges either because he made ten dodges and he passed them all, <laughs> and quite quite a few of them were four plus dodges. Um, <laughs> so that was a funny stat, but it didn't really it didn't really get me mad. Uh, people were commenting commenting on it in the match during the match, but uh, it didn't really feel like that it was terrible that he made all these dodges, just because everything else had kind of gone well enough for me, hadn't it? Particularly the riot. So um, glorious to it. I'm very happy to have won. Next round's going to be very tough. It's either a wood elf team that's tuned to the mirror or a human team that's tuned to killing teams. So either way, it's going to be a pretty pretty rough matchup in the second round. But, you know, fingers crossed. And uh, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And stay fantastic.